Okey, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera, selamat petang. Sekejap ah, I double check. Apa khabar warga TikTok? Eh, warga TikTok pula, warga Facebook. Ha, hari ni petang ni kita akan live bersama-sama dengan KPJ Sabah Specialist Hospital sekali lagi. Uh, terima kasih kepada KPJ Sabah Specialist Hospital kerana memberi peluang kepada saya untuk kita share, kita share, kita kongsi info, kita kongsi maklumat dah dengan uh, salah seorang dia orang punya dengan salah seorang dia orang punya pakar. Uh, hari ni kita ada Dr. Gordon Pang Huamang, consultant physician and geriatrician uh, daripada KPJ Sabah Specialist Hospital. Untuk kita bincangkan masalah dementia. Kalau dalam bahasa Melayu kan dia cakap dementia ni adalah nyanyuk. So sebelum tu tolong komen dulu. Boleh dengar dengan jelas ke tidak? Boleh nampak dengan jelas ke tidak muka saya ni? Tolong like, tolong love, tolong share, tolong tag kawan-kawan. Tolong like dan follow Klinik Sabah punya Facebook. Ha, kejap lah. nak double check dekat dekat kita orang punya page tengok keluar ke tidak. Ha, kejap eh. Okay, Makcik Ika kata okay, private chat, sounds image clear. Thank you very much. Very good. Okay, tanpa melengahkan masa, ha, kita akan jemput Ah, Okay, dalam dalam uh, Facebook live pun dah on. So, kita jemput Dr. Gordon untuk bersama-sama dengan kita. Hello, Doc. Hello. Good afternoon, Dr. Raizat. Hi, all. Selamat welcome, petang. Welcome. How are you? Fine, How very good. Thank you very much. So far, so good. Glad to have you here. So maybe um, before we proceed, kan? Maybe you just want to briefly introduce yourself to our viewers pada petang ini. Okay. Sure. Hi. Um. Selamat petang semua. I'm. My name is Gordon Pang. Now you can call me Gordon or Doctor Gordon. I'm a physician and geriatrician. Mungkin tak banyak pernah dengar apa itu geriatrician kan. We are hmm. specialists um, in treating older people. Yeah. So actually, uh, this also sounds vague to a lot of people uh, because hmm. they don't know. So many older people, what kind of problem we deal with? Uh, dementia is one of the main core business for us. Yeah. But actually, we deal with a lot more problems that's related hmm. to elderly. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm mainly based in Hospital Queen Elizabeth, but uh, I'm also hmm. a business. Okay, I think before uh, betul, um, tanpa melengahkan masa, I think we can share because you have slides kan? So, I think I will share you the slides lah so that you can start our discussion today. So, okay. uh, who, who, uh, whoever are uh, in the in our channel today, uh, please like, tolong like, tolong love, tolong share, tolong tag kawan-kawan especially mereka yang ada background nurses and MAs untuk mungkin you all nak collect you all punya CPD points. Okay, doctor, please. Continue. Okay. Everyone can see my slide, huh? Is it moving? Yes, I can see. So if, today, if, maybe uh, you want to. Yeah. Maybe you want to apa tu? Uh, maximize or. Oh, pun. for me, it's on the slide show already. For you, is it? Is it the slide moving? Uh, the slide not moving because it's the it's in the the show. I think ah, kalau macam tu. Ah, like that, okay. Ah, yes, okay. Ah, okay. That one okay. That one okay. Okay, continue. Okay. So, so, we have this 30 minutes share, sharing session. Uh. So, I thought dementia is a huge topic. So, mm -hmm. maybe this 30 minutes to, to get some basic concept of dementia and how we can reduce our risk of getting a dementia. Uh. I think that's relevant mm -hmm. to all of us. We, <laughs> we don't want to contribute to the statistic. So, many people, I think all of you know Malaysia is an aging nation. We belum lagi jadi age nation. Eh? We're on the way. Mm. We're reaching an age nation status very soon. Eh? This is where mm. uh, when there's more than 14% of our waka amas, I mean waka are, 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 sorry, more than 14% of our population are waka amas. Yeah? So we're going to be there in seven years time. Very soon. So this silver tsunami, we call it aging crisis, right? It's already happening. So mm. all of us here, if we have some uh, skill, uh, you know, some knowledge in dealing with older people, uh, the common problem of older people, I think it's going to be very good. Mm. So, a lot of uh, when our country become age nation, you can see a lot more elderly, they're going to be frail. Then you look at this blue line, can you see the arrow actually? Yeah, can, can. Yeah. 
So, mm. so all of us, we hope to be on the green line. Yeah, tapi mm. we will see many, many older people on the, on, the, on the blue line where they are more and more fair. And then when mm. they are ill, right, many of these fair elderly, they go into this red line where they go and become ADL dependent. Yeah. So mm. uh, uh, all of us here, actually, we play a role. Many of us here listening are healthcare workers. So some are doctors, nurses, and a right? Oh, we still play a role if we have some knowledge in the geriatric medicine. We can try to aim to push our elderly from this red line back to the blue line. Those mm-hmm. on the blue line, try to push them to the green line. Those of us mm-hmm. who are on the green line, we make sure we are maintained on this green line. Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah, understood. understood. Uh, so, so the common problem in the elderly, right, is like nicely introduced by this uh, Bernard Isaac 50 years ago. So all the eyes, but today we'll only talk about intellectual impairment, which is our dementia. Intellectual impairment, impairment we also have depression, we have delirium, uh, but we have no time to cover all that. Dementia is very common. Every second, every every three seconds, there's going to be one diagnosis of dementia. And very costly. Yeah, If we, we look at the amount of money needed to treat dementia, it actually it becomes the, one of the largest economies in the world. <laughs> so hmm. at the moment, globally, Dementia is the seventh leading cause of death. In Malaysia, it's not top three yet. But as our country moves towards yeah, each nation, we will see our dementia become one of the top three uh, cause of death in the elderly very soon. I think when we become an age nation in seven years' time, we will see that. So uh, more, a, lot, a lot of people living with dementia at the moment, and many of them are in Asia. But the problem is that many of these dementia can not diagnose. Yeah? Mm. Because... Uh, because uh, we, a lot of the doctors think, a lot of our people, even public think, dementia since there's no cure, no point diagnosing them, and no point mm-hmm. referring them to specialists for management. Uh. So actually, that's mm-hmm. not true. So at the moment, uh, we don't have much data uh, in Malaysia, but we believe about 9% of our elderly have dementia. So 9%? Nine percent, yeah. So actually, a lot. So that means that in, uh, in 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 when we are aging nature, we have quarter million of people living with dementia, but we do mm. not have enough dementia care provider in the country. Mm. So actually, mm-hmm. if you see WHO, right, they actually wants to all the country to have a national action dementia plan, but Malaysia don't have yet. So we are we are actually in the process of developing and pushing government for a national plan. So what we're doing now, we're doing now like now, uh, doing all this uh, FP talk, awareness talk, right? So we are trying to build the second and the third pillar. No? So trying to build a dementia awareness and we try to also uh, implement some intervention of risk reduction for dementia. Okay, I think uh, maybe some of you may not know, our brain is a very complex organ. Yeah, actually, there's so many functions in the brain. If some people talk about dementia, can you only talk about uh, memory loss. Actually, memory is only one of the functions that's mainly in mm-hmm. the hippocampus. But Alzheimer's dementia also affects all your other parts of the brain. So it depends on what which area of the brain has the degeneration or atrophy. So it will depend mm-hmm. that the symptom will appear. Yeah, so so this is just a, for you, don't, don't be stressed over this. So it's just to tell, tell us our brain is so complex. Every part of the brain is in charge of different functions. And when you have dementia, all of this function will be affected. Mm. So dementia is basically if you have a problem in your brain function, and this deterioration in the brain function must be severe enough to cause a problem in your daily function. So, so what I mean by daily functioning right, is things that we do every day, like driving, manage finance, doing housework, you know, uh, uh, going to work. And these are the, our problem. I mean, we will have a deterioration in the skill and, and ability to do all this when we have dementia. Mm. So uh, if this is probably more relevant to doctors, uh, if those who are trying to diagnose dementia, you won't say someone with dementia according to diagnostic criteria. You must have a problem with any of these cognitive domain, any of these six. Yeah? And this mm. cognitive domain must be severe enough to affect your daily life activities. So if we want to elaborate a bit more on the six domain gun, uh, you see, I mean, we we'll just quickly go through. Perceptual motor function is where you need to see, interpret your space. So it's important function that you need for driving yeah, or recognize uh, ways. And then if someone with dementia, you also have problem with the language. So you start to see your language not so fluent, uh, where we're finding difficulties, the grammars are all wrong. Now you should be able to speak English PM, Usun, and then suddenly you can't speak BM in English anymore. You can only speak 
to you know, back to your mother tongue. So those are signs. And memory, of course, memory, everybody knows a person with dementia will have memory problem. But they also have all this you no know, problem with executive function, planning to do a task. You know, last time someone has been very good in cooking. Suddenly, if you have problem with dementia, you have deterioration in cooking skill. So you won't be able to make such a complex uh, cooking dish anymore. Then you have problem mm -hmm. with attention, and even there will be a change of emotion and the way you socialize with people. So this is probably the most most uh, relevant slide for all of you here. So I think this is from WHO also, if you, this is a 10 warning sign of dementia. So we mm -hmm. all know memory loss, uh, but uh, these are the other ones that we may not know. So you also have problem performing familiar tasks, things that you do every day all these years, huh? suddenly you realize over the next few years, you suddenly have difficulty in doing it. Yeah, And then you have problem with language, yeah, you're not as fluent anymore, and then you tend to get disoriented to time place, things that place that you, you actually know before, but you start to get disoriented. And your judgment, you know, you have problem with judgment already. And again, this one problem keeping track of things is related to memory. So this, you, you, the people will give you a story like, you know, I keep misplacing my IC, misplacing my wallet, I lost my money, lost my car key, mm. this other side. Yeah? Uh, and then changes in mood and behavior. You know, some, sometimes uh, the, the, the patient become more agitated, more aggressive, you know, or more withdrawn. So these are, these are signs also that can point towards uh, dementia. And then mm. trouble with all these uh, get. Uh, re orientating yourself to space and images. Huh? So one of the symptoms will be when you drive, you get lost of direction, you cannot find. Mm -hmm. so these are the common signs huh, for dementia. So if I group it again to, to according to severity of the stages, so when you are early dementia, you probably will have just forgetfulness, you know, you, you keep on repeating the same thing, you forget about your, your, your thing, you misplace your belonging. But when dementia become more severe, become moderate, then you start to also have problem taking care of our own self. Yeah, you can't even communicate effectively, and this, and then a lot of behavioral and emotional changes happen in this stage. Also. And in Malaysia, as a lot of a uh, person are brought to our attention because of severe or, or unmanageable behavior, so that's why this is where they start to stress people around them, and family gets stressed and bring them to see a psychiatrist a lot of the time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, when, when the dementia get most severe, then they can't even walk themselves. No, they, they can't even walk, they can't even feed themselves, they can't even dress themselves, and then they can't even recognize family members. This are usually severe. So, a lot of people don't know this whether dementia and Alzheimer's are the same. Actually, strictly speaking, they are not exactly the same. Dementia is just a, a, a big umbrella term, and Alzheimer's mm. is the most common cause of dementia. Uh, if you just stand by only 70% of the time, you are correct. You just if you see Alzheimer's dementia. So our usually as clinician gun first we recognize there's a dementia. After that, we make an effort to find out what type of dementia because some slight difference in terms of treatment. But of course, in general, they're almost the same. And then there are more rare type with vascular dementia, mixed dementia also quite common. But these are the rare common, the, the not so common one are frontal temporal, Lewy body dementia and Parkinson's disease, disease dementia. So when we say about mixed dementia, that means we, is the patient has mixed Alzheimer plus vascular dementia, and that's quite common. Mm. Um, I don't want to talk too much about this. Huh? I mean, this many many people found out uh, why people get Alzheimer's disease because of this two bad guy, this neurofibril tangle and amyloid plaque. Uh, in a normal person without Alzheimer, you won't have these two bad proteins in the body. So, but when you have Alzheimer's disease, this is what happened inside the brain cell. And when this thing happens and accumulate more and more brain cells undergo degeneration, this is where you start to get symptoms. Mm. So a normal brain will look like this on the left, but when uh, severe Alzheimer's, when too much of degeneration have, has taken place, then the brain will be very shrunken and look like that. Right? Yeah. So the whole Alzheimer's disease right, is like a continuum, it's like a whole pro process. So like, like me now, uh, I don't know whether I'm actually preclinical or not because there could be something happening in my brain, but mm. I'm severe enough to show symptoms yet because the degeneration is very mild. But but if this thing continues to progress, then I'll start to show symptoms. But if I, my my ADL is still completely uh, intact, not affected, right? So I call myself mm. MCI, not cognitive impairment. So the moment you have any 
a daily activity that's affected, like you can't manage your money anymore, you can't drive anymore, then you become more dementia. So moderate dementia is when you start to have behavioral problem and then you cannot take care of yourself. Then severe is when you become completely dependent. So a lot of our, our, our community now in Malaysia, that they only present in the moderate stage when they start to have behavioral problem or they cannot handle themselves. In fact, through awareness and through this kind of public awareness, we hope more people will come to us at early stage because mm -hmm. The thing here, we, when we detect them at early stage, we try to slow down the decline, or if possible, we prevent the further decline. Mm. So uh, this is the one. BPSD is a new term, behavioral psychology syndrome of dementia. So this is what is stressing the family out. Some of them become very aggressive, agitated, and they have a uh, psychosis like hallucination and delusion. Mm. These are what is stressing people out. So when we diagnose dementia, can we need to get a proper history one. So you see geriatrician and psychiatrist a very long window. We need to gather the story. And then we do certain assessment. For uh, example, maybe Dr. Razor will know we do MMSC, for example. Ah, that, that, is, that is the one that I want to ask you about, MMSE. Yeah. Okay. You want to ask now or ask later? Let's continue. Just, uh, if, do, you have the, do you have the slides? Or you uh, uh, will we'll answer later? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm showing some of the slide on cognitive assessment also. Okay, good. So continue. Yeah. So so we do history taking, we need to gather history because history is still important. If you don't have a good history, no matter what test you do, MMSC, Mokaka, Mini, Kokan, it is not helpful to diagnose. So you must have a history, the 10 warning signs that I showed just now, and then you do a cognitive assessment to show, yeah, this cognitive domain got some problem. This cognitive domain got some problem. Yeah, then we do certain lab, lab tests to see whether there's any reversible cause of dementia. Most of the patients we need to do brain imaging like CT or MRI. And diagnosis is made on most likely cause. We can't, we, can't, we can't do a confirmed diagnosis because the only way to confirm diagnosis is through a post-mortem. It's through a mm -hmm. brain autopsy. Yeah. So for now, it's based on all these clinical symptoms, our assessment and the, all these investigation results and then we make the most likely diagnosis. So when so we assess... No, so, yeah. sorry. So this one will be done by uh, uh, a physician or a psychiatrist? Yeah, so this thing can be done by any trained uh, dementia care provider. So mm. at the moment, uh, I would say in Sabah, context of Sabah or even in Malaysia, right? most of these dementia diagnoses are being uh, done by geriatrician, psychiatrists, and also neurologists. But there are more and more GP or primary care FMS to say, or even physician, right? If they are, they have a uh, training in this topic of dementia, they also can actually do a diagnosis and provide treatment. Actually, so it's not an exclusive thing that uh, must only be diagnosed and, and treated by geriatrician or neurologist. So, is brain brain imaging and like MRI or CT scan is compulsory, or it's just because you said just now the diagnosis is based on assessment only? So. Yeah. We'll, Actually, we'll... the diagnosis is based on all this combined together. I mean, as many as much as uh, com as, if you can gather more as as much uh, information as possible, it will help mm -hmm. us to make the more accurate diagnosis. Actually, based on history and assessment, we can diagnose dementia syndrome. But then, mm -hmm. some sometimes uh, we we can't tell the subtype of dementia. We don't. We sometimes we can't be sure whether this is Alzheimer, vascular, or even actually a brain tumor causing it. Or is it mm. a bleeding, like a chronic subdural hemorrhage that's causing it? Or even hydro hydro hydrocephalus. So that is why the brain imaging is done mainly is to rule out those uh, the abnormal structural uh, abnormalities in the brain, like the hydrocephalus, SDH. It means uh, like, like organic causes, lah. Yeah, actually Alzheimer is also organic cause. It's just that oh. the organic cause you can't you can't do something to reverse that. But like, like for example, uh, uh, normal pressure hydrocephalus, you actually can do a drain. And then potentially, uh, symptoms can normalize. If it's just the SDH, you drain the SDH with burr hole, also potentially can normalize it. That is a cause for the person. I mean, uh, uh, that's a cause of the dementia. So these are some of the assessment for those trained providers to do. Uh, we do cognitive and non-cognitive. So cognitive assessment, I think one of the questions you were interested in is what kind of cognitive assessment are there? Actually, there are many types. If you look at CBG, we have informal rated kind of quantitative assessment or with the one that we do, uh, uh, clinician guided assessment. So in a GP perspective, if your if your clinic is busy and the volume is high, you can do use the use the one that is used for screening, shortest time, like mini -corp. Mini -corp is very easy to do. 
or even MMSE, MMSE is probably one of the most standard tests. I think most of the yeah. doctors know how to do. Even my nurse or my therapist are trained to do MMSE as well. Mm. And then, uh, and and some of us will do more calm because uh, if your if your severity is very mild, especially if you are highly educated, uh, you might still score very high in MMSE. That doesn't mean you do not have dementia. And and mm. those patients we will do a little bit more in that assessment with MOCA or even some other uh, the one that's no com not so common like WCAT or slums. These are just some of the examples. This mini cop so very easy to do. You just ask patient to remember these three things, Apple Watch Penny, or you, you can just do anything, Apple Watch or uh, wallet, and then ask them to do clock doing test and ask them to repeat the three things that you tell them. So if this thing is abnormal, then this patient is likely to have some sort of cognitive assessment, a cognitive impairment that needs to have been further evaluated by a specialist. Mm. Uh, MMSC, I think uh, a lot of people know how to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, because cognitive assessment will only tell you that it's a problem with one of the cognitive domain, the sixth cognitive domain. But then to diagnose a dementia, apart from abnormalities in the cognitive domain, you also need to show that it's a decline in, in ADL. So how do we get the confirmed as a decline in ADL? You can either get that through your history taking, if your history is very good, but some of them don't want to waste time in history taking, they go straight to this uh, ADL assessment. Some, some of the commonly used thing, if we check ADL, instrumental ADL, we use Lawton. If we want to check basic ADL, we can do a CAS or MBI. Of course, this one uh, usually is for those who have been trained, uh, and this training is not difficult. You just come for training, like a few sessions, and you usually can learn very fast. I think one relevant thing here is sometimes we, uh, I think a lot of us cannot differentiate between delirium and dementia because uh, like sometimes uh, you might encounter a patient and tell you, oh, my father suddenly become abnormal for a few days, suddenly become demented for a few days or for a few weeks. Huh? I think for a few days or a few weeks, right, it's very hard to diagnose dementia because the duration is, I mean, the onset is so acute and it, anything that happened less than a year, I think we need to rot delirium until proven otherwise. Because delirium is actually uh, curable, reversible, if we can identify what are the triggers for delirium and we remove that. So if you think your father has dementia for one month, for one week, and uh, that's likely not dementia, get, see a doctor urgently that can deal with delirium and then try to find out whether it's really delirium. Mm. So when I talk about blood tests and, 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 and scan, right? It's basically to rock all these reversible costs. They, we call it a dementia mimic condition. So your blood test will be able to detect a thyroid disorder. We'll also be able to detect all these uh, nutritional deficiency, hypercalcemia. And then you do a scan is to find out whether there's any hydrocephalus, any SDH brain tumor, things like that. Okay, so after that, the slide will be on risk reduction. Should we stop here for you for question or yeah, I think I think before con we, we continue, we have another about seven, eight minutes. I yeah. just want to double confirm about the MMSE. I'm yeah. not sure whether um, any, 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 uh, any GPs or any doctors in KKIA referred you uh, patients who are going for Hajj. Oh, going, you, for Hajj. going for Hajj. Yeah. Going for Hajj okay. because we have to do MMSE and I think Bristol ADL, I think. For, I see. For, yeah. So, um, I, I came across one or two patients um, that has a very low MMSE result. I think less than six, I think. So, oh. yeah. So, because he's, she's about 80, 80, 84 years old. So, um, I know that it is very difficult for, for her to go for Hajj with that, 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 uh, oh. that M M M the, the status like that. Lah. So, what, what's, what will your, what will you, what will you advise to like their their, their guardians or their 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 families about this this growth? Uh, so for that for that patient, right? Did did the patient also tell? Uh, did the family also report that it's cognitive symptoms like the ten any of the ten warning signs that I showed earlier on were there? Mm, some of it have, but I, I don't think it's all uh, But because it's not totally have. The not only, totally yeah, have, right? yeah, not totally it means that. Uh, I think she because, uh, sorry, the, sorry. The, the fact that this patient was still uh, has an attempt to go for heart, right? That means mm. uh, 
functionally, she must be quite independent. And there could be some, uh, some mild symptoms already that the family didn't think it was important or didn't think it was significant. So they mm. thought still she can go for Hajj and then therefore do yeah. all this routine assessment. Mm. So the, your low MMSC may be due to a few possibility. Number mm. one is this patient is totally illiterate. That is why uh, it's, when, when someone is illiterate, right, there's a lot of mm. these uh, tests a component in this test they are not able to perform properly right? so they yes, probably not even, they don't even know what's the day currently because they have never in their in their <laughs> <they're not laughs> so they yeah. won't get the thing so if they're illiterate they won't do the calculation as well so right. uh, and then they can't do the reading the orbit command or cannot do so so mm -hmm. in that case then mmsc cannot reflect truly their real state of cognition so in this kind of patient mm -hmm. it's probably wise to refer them to a dementia care provider for a proper mm. assessment to determine is that dementia or not. But a likelihood that of your case is that if there are some symptoms already, there's probably mm. a mild to moderate dementia that mm. uh, the family didn't think is important because they thought it's the normal aging. So yeah, they yeah. Because like that. They assume uh, that it is, it is normal for her to, to be like that. So I'm... Yeah. <laughs> I I see lah. So I don't think she is fit to go for Hajj lah. So yeah. that's why I refer yeah. lah. Yeah, yeah. So this patient will be good to go for a proper assessment to, to, mm. to be seen. So he will she need to see a geriatrician, new uh, psychiatrist, or a neurologist for that. Okay. okay, thank you for your feedback. Okay, I think we can continue. Yeah. We so I think all of us here yeah, yeah. so all of us here know what to know how to reduce our risk, forget dementia, or reduce your parents' risk. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. So these are proven. So what you see here is the WHO proven by you no know, studies. This all this it, you can look at this. Uh, it's actually very familiar to you. You are treating your NCD also with all this. Yeah, you manage your hypertension, your 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 diabetes, cholesterol, your mental health. Stop smoking. Be physically active. But I think there's a slide. Uh, it's better. Uh, I think this slide is a uh, is a better slide. So if we look at this slide, then uh, uh, this the middle red line. Anything above there in gold are good for you. That means this, this, this thing protects you from getting a dementia. Anything below that in red or gray is going to increase your risk for getting dementia. So you need to manage your weight. If you're overweight or obese, you need to find a way to reduce your weight. And then that's why we need to screen for hypertension, diabetes, cholesterol every year from the midlife onwards so that when you have all this disease, you detect it early and you try to treat it into like then you can be like a normal person yeah and of course depression is important yeah anyway, uh, this is a stressful world so we need to deal with our mental health so you have depression don't be afraid to seek for help you know to get it treated and then things like smoking alcohol unhealthy diet basically this is what is good for your heart is good for your brain and then mm -hmm. look at on top there what are the good things for your basically to reduce your risk of dementia physical activity yeah, you need to exercise five hours of aerobic activities per, per week because that's an HR recommendation. Of course, if you last time never had proper education, you can't change the past, right? So yeah. moving forward, you need to try to learn new things. Lah. The more new things you learn, uh, you're going to make you better. The medication... So you, you, need, you need to train your brain to think every... Uh, all, yeah, yeah, all yeah. Ways, <laughs> Correct. Our brain and physical are the same one. The moment we stop using it, right, it goes into this trajectory. Okay. So we can't stop. Even though after we retire, right, the average retirement is 60. Mm. Uh, actually, our average lifespan is 73 for men, 78 for, for female. Mm. So mm. It's a, another another adult life could <laughs> waiting yeah. for you after you retire. So you can't stop. You can't be saying that you want to rest at home and watch TV and just do nothing. Cannot. Uh, that's uh, we are going to get dimension with that. Mm. Okay. Yeah. okay. So in general, these are the things. So in, in summary, right, you control your cardiovascular risk, detect it early, diet. Later, I'll title, tell you about a diet. Be active in your exercise, keep yourself physically fit, uh, keep check of your emotion, yeah, and then keep doing some brain simulation activity. The more you do, the more you think, the more you learn, uh, it's going to be better. But don't overthink until you get into anxiety or depression. Huh? Everything must be in moderation. So when we talk about diet, the only proven diet now is... Uh, Mediterranean diet, which is olive based and fruit based and plant based. To me, I cannot lah. <laughs> I tried, so <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I will stick to Malaysian diet. I will do the other <laughs> risk reduction. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of people ask about supplements. Uh, all these supplements, yes. uh, mm. and here, uh, 
a lot of things are being asked. Uh, unfortunately, none of this, even coconut oil, like, none of this right, has been proven by proper study that it is uh, effective in reducing the risk, unfortunately. So, so if people ask you, is there any recommend uh, neural supplement? Uh, unfortunately, no now. And except one ginkgo biloba. And even mm. ginkgo biloba, not all types. There's only one specific type of the extract called EGB761 uh, by, the, by the brand of Tabonin. That is the only proven uh, extract of ginkgo biloba that can that have at least some evidence that it helps in prevention and also with those mild dementia to slow down the decline. But other than that, I think it's really up to all these uh, products, right, to do a proper study to show to us before we can recommend. Uh. But maybe mm. At best, we can say perhaps all these are no harm, but whether mm. it helps reduce the risk of dementia at the moment, no. no There's no, no evidence. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So those are risk reduction. Uh. But I think treatment, I don't think we have time to go about that. <laughs> mm. okay. Maybe, maybe I briefly, just briefly, just brief maybe uh, the treatment okay. before we end the session so that at least okay. uh, we everybody will get an idea, let's say, because all of us uh, uh, have yeah. uh, like elderly at home, our, our parents, maybe our uncles and aunties, in which we think that they might have some mild or moderate uh, dementia in which. I think uh, we really need to try to capture this group when they are still mild. As yeah, my, probably okay. still mild. Okay. These are the best time to capture them so that we try mm. to slow down the decline. So the best okay. way is when you identify the 10 warning signs. If you feel that one of your family have any of this, uh, so funny. Any of this, any of your family has problem with this possible 10 warning sign, get them mm. further assessed by a, either by a, a general doctor, your family doctor. If your family doctor are not familiar, uh, I'm not too sure about dementia, then you go straight to uh, dementia care program, like, like a geriatrician, neurologist, or psychiatrist. Mm. Uh, yeah, so and then and then for so first is to get diagnosis because without diagnosis, then you can't provide treatment. So the right. diagnosis, uh, you need to get the diagnosis early. After that, what we do, uh, normally the mainstay is still non pharmacological. That means through the one that I said just now, be physically active, be socially engaging, you have to do more cognitive stimulation activity. In terms of drugs, at the moment, no drugs has been proven to be able to cure. So what we do here is there's medication uh, mm -hmm. that is slow down the decline. So a lot of people are misunderstand, are thinking that take this medicine, they're supposed to see improvement. So therefore, when they take the medicine, there's no improvement, they stop it. Actually, no. If you take this medicine, you won't see improvement. What you see is slow down the decline. So you won't, you won't, you won't realize the effect. It's just that when people mm -hmm. do this study, right, they compare people who take this medicine without the medicine. The one who take this medicine a bit slower, that means they can remain at that stage and the longer time uh, become independent. Mm. But that's still not the most important part of the treatment of dementia. Most important part is still non pharmacological. Okay. So this way, we really have to engage a, a, a dementia care provider who is uh, uh, experienced in the dementia treatment so it can tell you what are the non pharmacological management that is important. And one of the things regarding to drugs, right? So someone with dementia, we are going to remove a lot of the drugs because we realize actually there are many drugs uh, that contributes to so-called cognitive impairment or dementia. One of the examples is like uh, artane that is given for mm. Parkinson's tremor. We yep. give the artane to control the tremor, but artane mm. actually causes cognitive impairment. And mm. also there's a lot of uh, URTI medicine like Pyrithone, Benadryl, uh, even mm. antidepressant, like amitriptyline commonly used, right? These are all actually in the long run contributing to a chronic Cognitive impairment. So when we when as you see this, right, we look at the medicine. Any medicine that is also contributing dementia, we take it up. So that that is like energies, the treatment uh, for, for dementia. Okay. I think yeah, most of the time, most of the thing that uh, that I think we we everybody here should know we have, have known. Uh, and then our, our time also we have actually exceeded for four minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I say half an hour not enough for the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. We touch to get some concept. Yep. Yeah. So be, I think before before we end, I think it's good that if you can share us uh, our uh tu, learning point, maybe uh, take home message yeah, for yeah. everybody. Yeah. yeah. So I hope um uh, people will realize dementia is not normal aging. That's number one. So if you have someone that you know who are showing some of the 10 warning signs, I think they bring them early to see a dementia care provider. 
or even say Dr. Rahizat or any of your family, your favorite family doctor. Sure, sure, can, can. Right? Yeah. And then uh, get them diagnosed early so that the expert can tell you how to slow down the disease. Or even there are some curable ones. A small percentage mm. are curable. Yeah. Mm. So the dementia journey is long, it's difficult. But when you see us, right, what we do is to make your rough journey a bit less bumpy, a bit smoother, a bit better for everyone. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Gordon, for the session. Everyone. Very enlightening. I learned a lot today. Thank you very much. Okay. Hopefully, we can okay. see uh, next time. Okay. In the sure. next session. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Terima kasih kepada Dr. Gordon from KPJ Sabah Special Hospital. Terima kasih juga kepada KPJ Sabah Special Hospital kerana memberi peluang untuk kita berdiskusi dan dan ber, berbincang lah pasal masalah dementia ni. Saya banyak belajar hari ni. Dapat juga saya dapat update sikit lah pasal MMS ni sebab memang kita memang yang last month tu saya ada buat pemeriksaan untuk jemaah, 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 bakal jemaah haji. So ada isu bila bila bakal jemaah haji ni berumur lebih daripada 75 tahun kan dan dia ada masalah-masalah yang memang kita rasa dia macam dapat dementia. So sama ada dia lulus atau tidak bukan bukan saya punya uh, tugas sudah sebab saya dah refer dengan dengan kita punya pakar. So hopefully you all belajar sesuatu. Thank you very much. Um, untuk yang nak CPD point, jangan contact kami. <laughs> Kena contact dengan KPJ sebab KPJ yang bagi tu CPD point. Uh, jangan lupa like, jangan lupa love, jangan lupa share, jangan lupa tag kawan-kawan, jangan lupa like dan follow klinik Sabah punya FB page. Uh, saya juga selalu buat TikTok. Sekarang ni saya live di TikTok pukul 4 petang. <laughs> so TikTok lagi ramai orang. Okay, hopefully kita jumpa lagi di, di masa dan waktu yang sama akan datang lah next time. Nanti bila, bila si Rosie contact saya untuk sesi yang akan datang. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. Untuk yang run untuk BIM, good luck everybody. Bye. Jumpa saya. Kalau jumpa saya di di root kan. Hi hi bye bye ya. Eh. <laughs>